Good morning, everyone. Um, so <clears throat> I took a day off yesterday from daily readings um, and a uh, much needed day off. This um, energy that we've been feeling leading up to the eclipse, the eclipse on the 2nd of July, which is Tuesday, uh, has been really heavy, really rough, really like the messages that I'm getting from people, they, the Instagram messages, the um, email messages, text messages from my friends, uh, everybody's asking like, you know, what is, why is everything so heavy? Why is everything so rough? And I know that this was a really rough week for me as well. And I'm actually here to give you good news because um, this roller coaster ride that we've been on uh, is for a reason like we've you know the ups and downs that we're really feeling right now a lot of it was to I just realized that my light back here isn't on um, but it's bright enough a lot of it was to purge our own egos a lot of it was to make us realize what it what those final things that we're holding on to because this eclipse is for fresh starts, new beginnings, allowing us to jump into and be able to have the confidence to take the risks that we need to take in life. Um, the things that we need to do in order to surrender, not even surrender, well, yes, surrender. Surrender to our sole purpose. Surrender to what the universe is saying, I have this for you. I'm, I'm handing this to you, and um, I want you to run with it. I want you to take it and I want you to have the confidence to run with it. And this week, <clears throat> this last week's energy um, that we went through with the Sun Square Chiron and um, the Venus and Neptune um, uh, sextile that we had, it was, I believe it was, anyways, it's not important now. Uh, it's the past, right? We don't want to dwell on the pain that we went through in the past week. We don't want to dwell on um, the triggers that we felt in the last week because what you really want to do is recognize what it is within yourself that needs to be healed. Um, I know that I have been put here during this lifetime to help heal others and sometimes that means that I trigger them. I don't mean to. I like honestly, it's so funny because a lot of I the a lot of the triggers that I got in the last week was about believing in myself, um, because that's one of those things that I've struggled lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. I've actually done past life regressions, and um, I've been persecuted in so many lifetimes. And what I mean persecuted, I mean like I was a witch, I was a healer, I was a shaman, and I was persecuted for it. And um, some of the lifetimes I succumbed to that persecution. Um, so this lifetime, my lesson that I am supposed to learn is how to overcome the um, persecution of other people to me. Because I had to learn this last week that... I know who I am and the people who are close to me and who love me dearly, they know who I am as well. So what I'm passing on to you right now is I am challenging you to find out what it was in the last week that triggered you and become consciously aware of it because this eclipse energy that's happening on Tuesday is opening up a whole brand new portal for us to go out there and to do our jobs, to do what light workers do, to do what healers do, to do what shamans do, to do what, you know, if, and if it's through tarot, if it's through mediumship, if it's through, you know, whatever it is that you are gifted with, if it's through art, if it's through dance, if it's through singing, if I don't, you don't have to be a healer to be a light worker. You don't have to be a Reiki master. You don't have to be a tarot reader. You don't have to be Somebody that can talk to people who have passed over to be a light worker. Um, light workers come in all forms and shapes and sizes. 
and um, they do, they have many, many gifts. Um, some light workers, their gift is working in a library and teaching children or working as a teacher at a school. Some light workers are very quiet light workers. Some light workers are like me, where I'm talking to thousands of people a day through the internet. So don't hold yourself back from where you feel like you're being pulled to. Um, we need light workers everywhere. Some people, some light workers work in the government and the military. Um, we're everywhere. And now is not the time to shrink back just because you're feeling a little bit of pain because that pain is going to help somebody else because you can say I've been there I understand what you're going through and I've been there um, yes this last week was not fun for so many people and I don't know how many times I had to say to people just keep believing in yourself Please be kind to your soul. Please be kind to yourself. Please allow yourself to um, heal in the way that you feel the most comfortable healing. If that is in a quiet way, if that means that you sleep, if that means that you take a day off of work and you allow yourself to just kind of hermit, right? And, and talk to source and be quiet and just chill. However it is that you need to um, allow yourself to heal like yesterday I got out and um, I mean this last week I, I kind of hold hold myself up and realized yesterday I needed to, to get out in the world um, don't hide away um, yourself don't hide away yourself that doesn't like I'm not even talking in a physical way if you need to like take some time to yourself for a little bit and heal yourself, that's fine. Um, but this eclipse energy is asking you to be big, to just be big, and um, in the in in your own way, to be big in your own way. And, and that means that there might be some risks that have to be taken. Maybe you have to move. Maybe you have to actually physically move energetic locations. A lot of times that push to move energetic locations. Now, eclipse energy, we, so we have the eclipse on the 2nd of July, and then we have another one. The lunar eclipse in Capricorn with the Capricorn full moon will be, uh, I believe it's July 19th. Hold on a second. I know we've done this before. <clears throat> Just talk amongst yourselves while I do this. <sighs> The 16th. It's on July 16th. Okay. And that will be a partial lunar eclipse. Now, <clears throat> solar eclipses are about starting new cycles. Lunar eclipses are about closing out cycles. So during and during this time, we will be in a Mercury retrograde. There will be five planets that will be in retrograde. I am talking about future energies right now, so I know that that confuses some people. The reason why I'm talking about these future energies right now is because I want you to be prepared. And we will discuss it more in detail as it gets a little closer. But during this retrograde season and these eclipses, um, a lot of people tell you not to actually like start new projects during Mercury retrograde. Don't sign anything. Don't buy technology. Like I bought a new printer, scanner, faxer. <laughs> this week, and um, I'm glad I did it now and not during Mercury Retrograde. Um, you know, there, there are certain things that people say don't do, but especially because we have 
five planets in retrograde, there might be like a little bit more push on, you know, you don't have to take action on things so fast. Um, I personally am someone that will say to you, don't stop your life just because a planet is in retrograde. Like there are no um, reasons why you should just like hunker down and not move for three weeks, right? Or for, because like Saturn and Pluto are still in retrograde. They're going to be in retrograde till September and November. Um, Neptune is in retrograde. Neptune's going to be in retrograde until November. Um, so I'm not telling you, I don't want you to just like stop your life. Like don't stop your life. What I really want you to do during, because if you feel the nudge, if you feel the intuitive nudge, not your ego saying, I have to do this because I need to make money or I need to be big or I need to, like, I need to be, um, I need to grow in certain ways. Like, you can figure out what's your intuition and what's your ego because your intuition is going to send you on a course that feels right, that feels good. Might be a little difficult, but it's still going to feel, re it's going to resonate with you, right? Your ego is that anxiety and like, oh my gosh, I got to get this done right, right now or I got to get this going right now or I have to sign these papers right now or whatever. That's kind of your ego. The anxiety, the not really feeling very well about things, the um, this is <clears throat> uh, not something that feels sit is sitting right. You know how you say this isn't sitting right with me? That's because it's your ego and it's not your intuition. If it was your intuition, it would be sitting right with you. You would not have a problem doing it. Not to say that there is an anxiety that comes with intuition, but a lot of times that anxiety that pops up with intuition is your ego saying, do you really want to do it? Do you really want to do it? Do you really want to do it? So um, during this time, this three-week period that Mercury is in retrograde, there all the realism is coming out. All the realistic stuff is coming out for you. Um, Saturn in retrograde, Neptune, Neptune in retrograde is definitely like no more illusions. You are really learning about yourself, the things that you've been lying to yourself for a really long time. Like, um, you know, I, there, just the, the self-deprecating illusions and lies. I can stay in this relationship. I can push myself through this relationship. I can push myself through this job. I can push myself, you know, it's like, all of that stuff, you're going to look at it and be like, oh, dang, Neptune retrograde is going to make you really see things in a very clear way because Saturn and Pluto are also in retrograde. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so during this Mercury retrograde period, plan. Because that the solar eclipse really does, it's a jumping off point for you to... <clears throat> Allow yourself to start new projects, to um, get yourself out there, to allow yourself to grow and be big, right? Um, but in Mercury Retrograde, everybody's like, well, don't start new things. If you don't feel comfortable, if it's not sitting with you to start something new right now, kind of take a step back and just plan it. Make a plan. Saturn is asking you to make a plan right now while it's in Capricorn still. Make that plan because I guarantee you there's going to be the ending of a cycle on July 16th for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I feel like that ending of a cycle that's going to happen on July 16th is going to be you um, no longer playing to your playing small. Okay. So that's my spiel. I don't even know how long I talk. Sorry. <laughs> Some of you really, really like it when I just jabber on like that. Some of you don't. So I don't really mind either way. I really don't, honestly. So let's see what the cards have to say. I'm using the Modern Spellcasters Tarot. Um, one of my absolute favorite decks. I've actually bought four of these decks. It's the Modern Spellcaster Tarot by Melanie Marquis, illustrated by Scott Murphy. Um, and the cards just don't want to come out. Kind of makes me wonder. If, oh, there we go. I'm like, has it all been said? Has it all been said? Okay, so we have the moon and we have 
the King of Cups. So this solar eclipse that we're going to be, we have the, we are going to have will be in Cancer. Um, and because this is kind of um, that jumping off point, Saturn and Neptune are still sextile as well. And that's really helping us um, step into, and we've already kind of been through that transit. We went through that transit a couple of weeks ago, but it's still there. Like it's still working and Saturn and the, the um, South node are still in conjunct and Saturn and the North node are still in opposition. So um, there's this very realistic way for us to start our spiritual journey right now, or to um, jump into this like spiritual work. Um, but you're doing it in a way where you're really like you're kind of being forced to um, take the steps. It could get really emotional. This time could get really, really emotional. I know that eclipse energy is not necessarily easy on a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> the biggest thing that I don't want you to do right now is to beat yourself up. So we have the five of cups. Um, cause I feel like what's happening is you're looking into the past or you're looking at the things that you quote unquote should have done, shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? Um, that five of cups, you can't focus on what hasn't happened. You can't focus on the things that are, you can't focus on the, not the things that haven't happened, the things that have happened. You can't focus on the things that have happened and and beat yourself up for not doing it a different way or feeling like you should have done it a different way let's see you i mean if you want to beat yourself up that's fine but you're not going to get anywhere doing it if i'm going to be real and honest um and just because you can't see things clearly i feel like with the moon there's this need for honesty with yourself Just because you can't see things 100% clearly, that doesn't mean that you just stop. Doesn't mean that you just stop. What you do is allow yourself to say, okay, this didn't work out in the past. So I'm going to change it up. I'm going to do something different. Let's keep going. See what else we've got here. For the energy leading up to the eclipse. There we go. So we have the death card, we have the lovers, we have the star, and we have the page of cups. I know that you want more out of the, this existence. I know that you want to come into alignment. I know that um, there's a need to feel like you belong, like you exist, like you're contributing. I understand that. I feel that very, very deeply. I feel that. Um, but now's not the time to give up on yourself. Now is not the time to give up on yourself because you have a purpose in this lifetime you there is a reason that you're here there's a reason why you exist so there are cycles that have to end or transition right could have to do with a relationship could have to do with just coming into alignment with your purpose the star energy is about healing the star energy is about balance the lover's energy is about making decisions, but it's also about coming into alignment with yourself. Yes, it's also about relationships, <clears throat> being in a strong relationship. 
but this death card is saying you're transitioning out of this mode of not being able to push forward. You're transitioning out of this mode of um, looking into the past and being really, really regretful about the things that you haven't done. Okay, so the moon. Let's see what the moon is. If you want more out of life, you're in charge of that. You can gain the momentum to get more out of life. That page, this page of cups down here, it's very, very telling. Let's see the moon. Yeah. So we have justice on the moon. And justice is about balance. The lovers is about balance. The star is about balance. Justice is that if you look at this justice card, I love this justice card. She's beautiful. Um, there's a wheel of fortune above her. There's literally like karmic retribution. There's this um, coming into karmic balance with yourself when it comes to the justice card. So that moon is, you got to get honest and it can't be an all or nothing right? Why can't you just be a little bit in between? And I guarantee you, because you are a light worker, or you are somebody who is a healer, or a star seed, or they're all labels to me. So, but you're here on this planet to make a difference. There is no... One hundred percent balance all the time. You can be in alignment with yourself and still feel sad. You can be in alignment with yourself and um, have a, a very high vibration and do all the things that you're supposed to be doing and still feel sad. It's okay to have emotions. It's okay to be triggered. It's okay to get angry. It's okay to get pissed off. If you're a light worker, you can still do that. It's all in moderation. It's all allowing yourself to be who you truly are. This King of Cups is somebody who is very caring, very supportive, very intuitive. Um, but he also knows how to rule his kingdom with a fair hand, right? So let's see what this King of Cups is. I feel like the Divine Masculine right now is really... Um, doing a lot of purging of the, yes, doing a lot of purging of the ego. It's like this anger has formed with the Divine Masculine. I actually did a Twin Flame reading. My Twin Flame readings are exclusive to Patreon. So um, if you have not seen that, you can go to my Patreon. The link is in the description box below. Um, and it's just, a, it's a subscription. It's a monthly subscription. They're only exclusive to Patreon right now. I have my reasons for that. I understand that not everybody understands why I'm doing it, but that's what I'm doing. Um, but the last Twin Flame reading that I did talked about the Divine Masculine purging his ego. There's this anger that the Divine Masculine is holding on to right now. And I feel very much like there's um, that this energy leading up to the solar eclipse is helping him purge out all of the energy that he's been holding on to. Let's see what this five of cups is. Yeah. Um, the knight of cups on the five of cups. So we have the Knight of Swords on the King of Cups, and we have the Knight of Cups on the Five of Cups. There's a need to give love right now. We all have our crosses to bear. We all have our things that we're not 100% proud of. We all are, you know, we're human, right? Nobody is better than anybody else. Um... And 
what's really interesting is if we just like gave each other a little bit more love and affection, but also if we gave each other a little bit more respect than we do. And by that, you know, I've been using the term stay in your lane for quite some time. Respect is about not sticking your nose into other people's business because you you think that you're right about something. It, not jumping to conclusions um, about anybody in your life because you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Stay in your lane. It's not just about driving. Stay in your life lane, right? And give a little bit more love and respect and I guarantee you there won't be so much regret from the past. Also give yourself love and respect. That's a really big thing right now. So let's look into this transition. There's a big transition that's happening. Let's see the death card. Um, there are parts of you that are literally dying and then rising from the ashes so you can make shit happen. I'm just going to say it that way because that's the way spirit wants me to say it. So you can make shit happen. The magician on the death card. The death card is literally the card of the phoenix rising from the ashes. It represents Scorpio. It represents transition. And that magician energy is making things real. And during this time that's coming up with this eclipse energy, it's all about planning. And it's all about planning new things in your life. We are in the shadow period of Mercury retrograde. So be very, very cautious with yourself when it comes to starting new things. Just listen to your instincts. I'm not saying don't start new projects. I'm not saying don't start new things in your life. I'm just saying listen to your instincts. Listen to your gut instincts. Um, let's see. The lovers. Aligning within yourself, and I really feel like that's what this lover's energy is because I feel like the, like the divine masculine and the divine feminine are both learning how to align better within themselves, which is something that I help with in my alignment, my one-on-one -on -one alignment coaching. And um, also I will be, I'm doing self-alignment coaching while I'm traveling. Um, I'll be in, in, um, I believe actually St. Louis is being rescheduled from July 6th to July 13th. And then um, Chicago is August 3rd. Um, LA and San Francisco, August 23rd and 24th. And Portland is the end of August. I just had to throw that in there. Um, but the alignment is giving you strength. So we have the strength card on the lovers. The alignment that you are learning right now um, and, and being in self-alignment does not mean that everything is going to just fall into place right now. Being in self-alignment gives you the um, strength to listen to your own intuition, the knowledge that you know that everything is going to come into alignment. And recognizing and realizing that you don't have to be perfect for it all to happen. You just have to be honest with yourself. Because what's the first rule with being in self-alignment? being aware of your own bullshit 100 percent. being in self-alignment and if you feel like you have to continuously put your bullshit off onto other people you're not in alignment you see and uh that was a really big lesson for me this last week that when other people who are not in alignment um you know, and you're not in alignment. If you're not in alignment 100% of the time, you can't like beat yourself up about it, right? You got to understand that we're still all very human. If you want to heal from the past, you have to make a conscious decision to walk away from the past. That eight of cups on the star. You have to let yourself walk away from the past. 
You can't just sit in it and expect for things to be okay. You know, you can't just sit in um, your misery, that emotional baggage, and just bring it into the future. Why do you want so much more out of life? Because you're still living in a past that's no longer serving you. And if you feel like the only way, let's see what's at the bottom of the deck, the Seven of Wands, which is all about healthy boundaries. If you feel like the only way that you're going to be able to push forward is by being in a relationship with somebody, um, you have to be in a relationship with yourself first and foremost before everything else can fall into place. But we have that Two of Cups on the Page of Cups. Now, if you are in a relationship and you want more out of it, then you got to be open and honest. Don't just, I mean, if you can't be open and honest with your person, with your human, and set healthy boundaries with them, if you can't be open and honest, then there's a problem there right? Like you need to be able to be open and honest with the person that you love, the person that you share your life with, and they need to be open and honest with you. And if there's not that communicate, if there's a gap in communication, it, something needs to be said. But this transition is really big. I really like this energy that came out today, honestly, because I feel like you, like there is this this flip that's really happening and we're, we're allowing ourselves to move forward into may it's the unknown but it's it's so much bigger and so much better than than it used to be right so whatever it was that happened this last week in your life allow yourself to accept what what happened allow yourself to accept the triggers allow yourself to accept the healing and let this eclipse energy move you into something much bigger and and much better okay I love you all I will be back on Monday to do the daily morning reading um, so have a wonderful weekend and if you want to get a personal reading with me they are still going to be on sale until Monday so it'll be like midnight Sunday night midnight let's just do midnight central time um, and after that, they will go back to regular prices. Um, a lot of really big things are happening right now, and there are going to be some changes to the channel too. So uh, uh, daily readings, I love these daily readings. I'm doing them as much as I can. I'm only doing them when my energy feels right or when I, when I feel like a daily reading is needed. So if it doesn't happen every single day, that's why. But So I'll be back on Monday. I love you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.